Welcome back to The Check-In. My name is Jared, and today I am joined by Cameron Morrissey, a fellow Compass colleague. Cam, how you doing? Living the dream, Jared. Living the dream. Living the dream. Somewhere around 63,000 <laughs> living the dream. Uh, Cam is on the people team here at Compass. He's one of the people behind the scenes that really moves the company forward. And I asked him to come on the check-in today to talk about, well, I'm going to throw him two questions and let's just, we're going to dive right in. The first question, Cam, is when you're looking at hiring, when you're looking at recruiting, we're looking at bringing someone on the team, someone to come in and work in Bitcoin what is something that if they bring with them, you know, think about their backpack, right? If they put it in their backpack and they hop on the team, it's going to allow them to be like, you know, get to the most success, be, be the best employee, be the best team member, be the best colleague that they can be. Good question. Good question. Um, and I, I think I heard it earlier on a, on a podcast. Somebody was talking about how the industry is more of a roller coaster than it is a merry-go-round. And, and you hear that a lot in, in Bitcoin, in mining in particular, you hear that. I don't think it does it justice. I, I like to describe it, and I've described it before to other people on the people team. I'm looking for somebody that can take a punch straight to the face, <laughs> get themselves back up again, smile, and get back to work. Um, it, it's a little bit more than perseverance. And, and the reason I kind of put that, that point on it is it can be emotional in an emerging industry like this. You know, mining itself is half the age of Bitcoin, really, um, in its present state. And so it's very new. We're setting industry standards out there. And so you might work on a project and put your heart and soul in it for two weeks, two months. And at the last moment, it gets rug pulled for regulatory reasons or hardware reasons or something like that. And it hurts. It hurts. And the people that are successful that I've seen be successful at Compass and in the industry are the ones that can take that punch and just keep going. Um, and it, 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 it's too trite to call it perseverance and grit um, because I feel like it's more than that. And then that unlocks everything else that you have. And if there's there's one other thing, if I can just go ahead and kind of answer with two, it is um, the ability to bring ideas. Again, it's an emerging industry. And I, I, I tell every single person that comes into this company, we want your ideas. We are an open book. We are looking for the way forward. And if you've got an idea that you had at a prior company, prior experience, or just something that came off the top of your head, let us know because that's how we're going to move everything forward as far as the industry goes. But where people trip up is where they can't take that punch. And uh, it, it's 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 a tough industry, and and you need to be ready for it. So that's what that's that's what I'm looking for first and foremost um, beyond the resume. And before I dive into my next question, just because I love the fact that you basically make Bitcoin into an octagon, and you have to like go fight a UFC fighter, what is an example of you know? Do do you have like a recent example where because it's not just like getting back up. You said you want to get back up and have a smile and like maintain the attitude, not like get back up and be like, Oh, I can't believe that happened. And then lose a week. Cause your attitude yeah. is off. Yeah. You know, is there something that instead of asking about it, maybe an employee at compass and you're not going to use the name, but is there something for you that has happened that you could speak of from like a lived experience? Hey, this is when I got punched in the face and this is like, I, I just couldn't have foreseen that happening, but now I know I'm better because I got back up and I was smiling. Well, I'll, I'll use I'll use a recent example of of us deploying resources, and the inspector doesn't come to the site, and so everything gets pushed back a week. Um, that's that's something that's happened, you know, in my two and a half years with the company, just a ton of times where you have everything lined up, the whole project, you know, it's set, it's ready, you're off to the races, and it's either a final hurdle that doesn't get get uh, covered, or you get some sort of delay um, that happens with that, and so the, those those are very common ones that happen and you spend all those resources and you, and you, you try to get it, you know, you put in the long hours to get everything ready. And then it turns out you didn't need to put any long, in any long hours at all. You could have taken your time um, based on things completely outside of our control. And that's, that's the tough part of, of the industry. It's a new industry in an emerging market. We're dealing with projects, physical projects. And if anybody's dealt with contractors before, you know, there's there's issues that come up. We're dealing with regulatory agencies at a local and a state level. We're dealing with suppliers overseas. And that's just ripe for all kinds of situations that can come up. And as much experience as we have as a company in dealing with those, dang it, I can't tell you. It's just it keeps coming from left field with the curveballs. Um, and it, it's 
you deal with it with a smile. And luckily, we have a team at Compass that is well versed in that. And we'll be making the jokes and smiling there right along with you. So if you did want to have that poo poo moment, woe is me, nobody around you is really, you know, holding your feet to the, I don't want to say holding your feet to the fire, but they're going to be there to lift you up. And so that's, what's been really great about putting the team together here is, is building that culture where we can take that punch and then somebody's there to help you off the mat and make a joke to put a smile on your face so that you can get back to work. Those are great. So the things we want to put in the backpack to succeed in Bitcoin or to succeed at Compass as a team member is you got to bring some ideas, but you also got to be able to take a punch, get back up, take it, take a punch in the face, get back up and keep smiling. So those are the things we're going to throw in our backpack. And now I think when I, when I ask this, I think of the visual of the movie Saving Private Ryan, where Tom Hanks goes and he takes the interpreter and he has to take him out to the field and he, the interpreter wants to bring his, um, he wants to bring his typewriter. He wants to bring all these books. And there's this great scene where Tom Hanks is just throwing, you're not going to need that. You're not going to need that. You're not going to need that. You need your gun. You need your helmet and let's go. Similarly or conversely, what is something that maybe someone wants to put in the analogy of the backpack to come work in Bitcoin that they think they need? That's like the typewriter that they just don't need to succeed. I love, I love this question. And, and I have a controversial take on this question, um, even within even within Compass and within the industry. The thing people think they need to have is a ton of experience and a ton of knowledge in Bitcoin. I come from the, the philosophy that Bitcoin is inevitable. And personally, I've taught a ton of team members that have come in with no Bitcoin experience or no mining experience and taught them the basics. And then Bitcoin takes over from there. So one thing that people are looking for is that experience. The other thing is from a practical perspective, we're a super fast growing industry. And so there's not a ton of people with experience out there to continue to build at the stages that we're building at in the industry. And so we'll take somebody that shows curiosity. Sure. And, and don't get me wrong. If you've got Bitcoin experience, that's a great thing to have in your backpack. Um, but it's not something that's absolutely necessary. And I, and I throw this out to people um, on the team too. If you have a friend that's great for a particular role that we're hiring for, but isn't a Bitcoiner yet, bring them on over. We'll interview them. We'll see what happens with that. Um, but we can teach it. Bitcoin is addictive um, and is, is fantastic and, again, inevitable. So we bring people on and they become Bitcoiners. And, and that's, that's just a fantastic way. Actually, to... to to think about a specific example, if you were going to head off in that in that realm, um, we had a position open up at one of our facilities, and a lot of these facilities are in remote locations. So there's it's 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 difficult to source talent in those locations, and we had several people apply to this role locally. Um, we ended up hiring our FedEx driver to be a technician at one of our sites. He had come out, he'd making regular deliveries to the site. He was inquisitive. He wanted to know what was going on. He'd ask questions about what he was delivering, all of those things. And the site lead liked the cut of his jib um, and thought he had that sort of tenacity and had potential. And so he went through the interview process and we ended up hiring him. Now, yeah, we'd love to have a tech that could, bam, first day, hit the ground running, start doing some, some bolt-on repairs and networking and stuff like that. But we can bring people on board. He can do fan repairs and then do bolt-on repairs and then do some networking and, and just build them up from there. And so instead of being ready to go in two weeks, he's ready to go in two months. Um, but he has that grit and he's he's fantastic out there in the field. And we've seen that over and over and over again, um, where if you bring that right person on that high, has that right mentality, they'll be super successful in this industry. And it's it's great as a way of broadening out the Bitcoin, Bitcoin ecosystem and bringing new people along. Yeah. Okay. So those make sense. So you need to be able to take a punch in the face and you need to bring some ideas and you don't necessarily need to be a Bitcoiner. You don't need to be obsessed with Bitcoin, but you probably need to have a philosophical curiosity maybe around it. And most importantly, just be ready to learn day one and be asking the right questions and kind of ready to grow like the FedEx driver, which I think is an absolutely amazing example. While we're here, anything else you want to add? Because I feel like these are, these are you know, pretty two big things we're thinking about hiring and recruiting for Bitcoin. Yeah, um, it's depending on the position that you apply for. Yeah, those, those remote tech positions, 
you might be going up against five people, one person, zero people, um, something along those lines. Um, we have had positions where we have 900 applicants in three days. And so please don't take anything I said to mean that you shouldn't be doing the standard things, researching the company, researching Bitcoin, researching mining, all of those things. Yes, you need to absolutely be doing those uh, to put your best foot forward uh, because it, it's it's a dynamic industry that a lot of people are looking to break into. It certainly is. And actually, we just published a podcast recently with John Rodriguez from Foundry and Annie Thompson from the Bitcoin Talent Co. I'm going to link that above. But I think John talks about, you know, they put out a call for I forget what position and they had almost a thousand applicants. It's, just, it's very similar to the numbers you just shared, you know, and overwhelming amount amount of applicants. So you do need to be able to separate yourself from the rest of the candidates. But I think what you said is, is, is totally spot on. If you just come with like curiosity and you're ready to learn, there's really nothing you can do. And before we actually hopped on here, a little behind the scenes, we were talking about two of our fellow colleagues who have recently hopped in with, as you've called out, no Bitcoin experience. And they are absolutely adding amounts of value to this company that I'm finding to be invaluable. So anyways, Cam, thank you for uh, for taking the time today. If you're listening to this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Listen to us on podcast platforms. Please subscribe. Follow us on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. And Cam, thanks once again for hopping on the check-in. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it.